Let's go, baby. Alpine Ridge, motherfucker. Come on. So this level starts off pretty simple enough. These big fat fucks are really annoying. They have big ass hitboxes. So make sure you're flaming them off in the appropriate direction so you don't bonk like that. This guy right here, this whole staircase section, let's keep watching for a moment. This whole staircase section is really easy to bonk on. So just keep it together while you're going through there. Um, if you go quickly enough, uh, you should be able to catch the thief early enough in time. Now, one thing I just want to point out with this little chest right here, if we just watch this in slow-mo, you can see there's a very clear fade back with this flame and then fade back right here. You need to fade back as hard as possible right there so that way you can get on top of that stair without bonking. And then just be really careful as you ascend these stairs. You could also flame charge this guy coming through so that you have a better angle uh, coming to these uh, blocks. Now this fucking fan chest right here, you'll notice I do that, that cheeky little roll right there. Look at that. Fucking rolling like the fucking house is on fire. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to get into a position that's more favorable for me to get the flame charge and continue my charge afterwards. Now you'll notice if we watch this in slow mo, I still do a, um, I still have to do some awkward turning there. So in fact, what you could do at this little section right here is you could flame the first flame, roll, flame the second flame, and then roll again, because there's time for you to do that roll during the cooldown of the flame and then be in an even more favorable position to hit these two guys. And as long as you're quick enough, you'll catch all of those guys on an appropriate cycle. And that really is the big idea with this level is that you're catching all the cycles. Now look at this right here, jump, charge, jump, charge, and then charging jump off. You have, you have plenty of room to do that, but it does seem a little scary at first. Mess with the approach on that. Now here, you have to run to that wall. You might be wondering why I didn't just run far enough to collect this red gem right here at the end of, a, of this group. You have to run all the way up to this wall, maybe like a foot or two away from it. Um, you, you could be like a, you know, a little bit away from it, but you need to run all the way up to that wall so that this guy um, doesn't go up when you get close to him. And you see when we keep watching this, watching in full motion, that he does not go up on his platform. If you don't do that, he will go up on his platform. Now with these three guys, you can choose a couple of different options. What I like to do is I prefer to just um, flame them all three individually. Saboom has a slightly different strategy right here. Well, he'll flame this first guy, wait for the gem to collect, and then flame the rest of them. In fact, that's, I'm sorry, pardon me, that's exactly what I did. He'll flame the three guys and then not wait for the gem to collect and then collect them all later. Either way, um, I like waiting for the first one to collect because you have to kind of go slowly there anyways. And then again, if you're on top of your cycles and if your movement is good up to this point, then you should be good on these stairs. In fact, you can go so fast that you'll have to wait for them sometimes. But usually what will happen is you'll be going, you'll make a mistake or two or a bonk here or there, and you'll have to wait an extra cycle for these stairs. So don't be too hasty with the stairs. Even if you're waiting for them to open like this, you can see that, you know, there's plenty of time for me to get on them and it's all good. Um, when you're racing them, it could be a real bonk fest and I've died there a lot charge these two guys another roll strat again there's another opportunity for a double roll if you want to do that but i like doing the single and then jump charging into this guy let's check out that movement one more time uh oh check out that movement one more time flame roll so charge these two guys flame i roll i flame you could also roll again and then jump charge to hit that last guy you see i was going for a flame charge on that last guy it's the way to go also double flame charge these boxes right here so when you're in this position coming out of this um this jump charge from the flame charge of the box um you flame charge this guy boom see i fucked that up but luckily i was on top i was on my toes beautiful piece of recovery there this was this came from my, one of my 123 pbs and you can see the reason why runs like this like a run like this didn't die is i took the time that when i noticed i fucked up the flame charge if even the, i could feel i could feel that i wasn't gonna get this flame charge i knew that i was too close like on that approach right and when i'm right here i'm thinking like okay i'm gonna try to flame charge him but i'm too close so i see that i missed it and i'm already stopping i'm not trying to continue that's called awareness right there. And that's the shit that as a new player, you need to kind of clue into not going too fast, not being too hasty so that you're not throwing, if I'd have just kept going and jumped off, missing the flame charge when he was clearly gonna miss, that shit will happen. And it's, it's a huge time loss. Going forward here, we got the double flame charge on these two boxes. And if you miss either of the gems there, you can see you can just clean them up right afterwards, no problem. 
to keep watching at full speed. This big fat fuck, again, don't get bonked on his uh, hitbox or else you will get fucked by this wall right here. Usually, if you're on a fast cycle, you could even be in front of this wall. Um, but uh, more often than not, you'll have to wait for it if you bonk or have some awkward movement. This is what an ideal cycle would look like so far. Cleaning up all of this, I like to try to go for a double flame charge there because we're going to have to come through and hit these gems. Now, scooting back just a little bit, that metal guy right there, depending on the cycle, how fast you go, um, he could be on a favorable or unfavorable cycle. It also has to do with the camera movement in the room before this, that little tunnel area. So um, if he's coming in towards you, I would recommend hitting that metal guy right there early. But since he was moving away from me, um, I opted to leave him for later. Again, on good cycles, so that guy came down really easily for me. I would definitely say with this guy, if you were like late on his cycle, sometimes what'll happen is you think you can get it, and he'll be like coming up as you're landing like right here. And if he's coming up during this part right here, if he's moving the platform up, there's a high chance that you'll actually, the platform will move so fast that you'll just go straight through the collision of the platform and uh, go straight into the void. I've seen that. It's happened to me a lot, and I've seen it happen to other players a lot. Nice flame charging on those two boxes right there. Just flame charge the far one, but you could also go for a double flame charge here. Now, right here, you hold X and square and no and neutral input on the on directional. No, no directional input and hold X and square. Otherwise, I guarantee you, you're not going to make that uh, charge jump up that ledge right there. I like to go for three of the metal boxes right there. That's kind of crucial. You could go for just two and then jump charge back for the other two. Um, also, what I'll see people do is on 120 is they'll go left to right with these metal boxes because you'll see with the metal guy upstairs there that tends to be more favorable. But I like to pay it, play it a little um, a little risky with that guy because you could always get him on the second time around after the next section coming up here. Come up, careful not to bomb. And see, he came straight towards me, so there was no problem that time. Now here, what you can do, and I, for some reason I don't see uh, players do this more. Jump, this is the same strategy as what you would do in Dark Hollow. Charging jump and then flame charge the little glide buffer as you fall down right here And that will get that flame close enough to him There's no need to short hop flame or anything like that or anything awkward and slow But whatever feels most comfortable to you another thing to consider is that because these two guys have such huge fucking character models um, You're not gonna really be able to see the gems super well as you're collecting them So make sure this is a really crucial spot that you're listening to the audio of the gems collecting This is this is one of the places where you're gonna want to be able to hear your game sound so that you know you collect that gold. Moving forward here. Oh, just a quick aside about that little blue spring chest right there. Um, it's very easy because there's a fade back right after this one. There's a couple of fade back spring chests here. There's one in the beginning before the stairs as well. Don't be too hasty with a with a spring chest that requires like a harsh turn afterwards. Really just make sure you got the gem from this first because it's very easy to do the short hop flame and miss when you're trying to optimize the turn too hard. You see, I fully jumped into that and faded back. Skitter jump up that. Be preemptive with that flame on that guy. Now, I do a strat where I go to the right first, charge out of the air there, boom, charge into that uh, box. Now, an alternative strategy, if we move back here, would be to go down here and actually go down to the left, um, flame the box and the big fat guy in one hit. You have to come from the left, turn it to the right, flame both of those guys in one hit, come back around, hit the other guy, then collect the gems after they explode. Um, in in people's testing, they found that to be similar in time save, time loss. I'm of the opinion that, at least for me and my execution, I find this to be just a bit faster. Um, and it just feels it just feels smoother to me, even with the added damage. Um, I'm at green sparks right now, which is not exactly ideal. But even being sparksless at the end of this level, um, it's a pretty easy cleanup, and there's a free fodder at the very end. So it's not as bad as a time loss as you might consider. But yeah, I mean, being green sparks here isn't ideal. I think being blue sparks going down into that area uh, is not the vibe. Now this little section right here is great. In fact, let me uh, bring it back a little to right before this dragon. Now, with this uh, little section right here, I'll even bring it back to like right here. So with this little section right here, watching in slow-mo, we hit this guy, you could actually do, I do a jump charge right here, but you could actually do a charging jump up this, flame charge to hit this guy as early as possible, and then what'll happen is that metal guy will land on the stair, and if you're going quick enough, I do a full charge glide there to make sure that I don't bonk. Again, very bonkable stairs here, so make sure you're doing, you're giving yourself plenty of room on these uh, jump charges. As we get up here, boom, flame charge those last two boxes. And if you miss, see, look how you miss, I missed the last one. You can still just grab that out of the air as you're doing your jump turn. That one was a little sloppy on my part. Come around and touch uh, this dragon on this side. You can also do a roll into the dragon as you come around. Now, once the dragon is uh, done here, you could do a jump charge turnaround, but I just like to personally just pivot. 
charge and then charging jump off the edge. Now look right here. You can see very clearly that there's a spot where multiple polygons meet right here. You want to go up, up right, diagonal up right where this bit, you can see where this big sort of polygon is right here. This is where you're aiming in this general area. This whole polygon right here, at least in this area, there's no collision whatsoever. Um, so use this big um, intersection point of polygons as a visual reference for when you're doing this uh, jump. And there's nothing more to it, you just fly straight through it. Um, coming in from out of bounds, you have to be sure, you have to pay attention to the fact that you'll get kind of bounced in from the wall. You see how the camera gets kind of janked on the wall right there? So that can affect the way that you hit the, um, the thief. So just be aware that that's gonna happen. There's not a lot you can do to compensate for, but just be aware that it's gonna happen. Um, what I do here is I jump, a uh, flame charge jump into him. Um, that does cancel the animation. That's, this is probably one of the better strats you could do here. Alternative strats you could do would be to flame charge this box right here and also hit the thief with that same flame. That's one option. And you could also flame charge jump past him, but I don't recommend that because uh, you, you'll have to just make up that movement by jump charging back. Or, and here's a more experimental strategy, you could wait for this thief uh, to actually move past you and then catch him as you move into this uh, next area right here. Like after after these boxes, you can catch them like right here. This section is very straightforward, very simple. Um, you know, if you can't do this section right, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, maybe quit. No, I'm just kidding. Anyways, look at this right here. What you're gonna want to do with this big dick shit right here is you're charging, you're charging, you're charging, charging, jump, and then a little glide buffer. Where is it? Oh, I don't even do it here. You actually don't even have to do the glide buffer. I take it back. But see how I'm kind of pushing up against the wall? Look at that. Pushing up against like the wall roof area right there. And that helps me get that extra downward momentum to get kind of down in there. Um, a really preemptive jump is the key there, basically. And if it's too preemptive, then you could do the little glide buffer in the middle, in midair, like what I was talking about. But here I did with plenty enough time, plenty of time to get through. Cursor Senpai made a reappearance there. Shout out to the Cursor Waifu. And um, when you charge through that first box, you just charge through the first one. A lot of people try to charge through both of these boxes, but charge through the first one and try to flame, uh, double flame charge the other two. If you miss one of them, then you can always just grab uh, just grab it like kind of a nice little backup like that. It's not a big deal. Now here, very awkward. I do a recharge there. You'll notice that um, coming out of this, it's not going to be like a straight diagonal upright that you're going to want to move. That's not what you're going to want because then you, you won't be close enough to the edge, right? When you come out here, let's go in slow motion. When you come out here, I kind of go a little left up, like like most, pardon me, mostly right up coming out of that dragon, right? So I'm kind of going right, and then I adjust it with the recharge, so that way I can really get the charging jump coming out of this real this corner right here. If you charging jump from like back here, there's a high probability that you'll bonk or miss this platform, which I have done many times. Flame. Flame straight forward. Now here you don't flame the last one. With this one, the um, the approach is very important. So it'll only work. This uh, damage um, abuse on this box will only work if you hit it somewhere like in this area. If you get knocked back into like right here, this is basically where you want to get knocked back into. You what you don't want to aim to get knocked back here. Um, like, like, cause you'll notice the fucking hitbox, like, you look at the geometry of this, if you hit it here, you'll be closer to the edge, right? So you want to hit it like here, you see this is where this is going to be like, the broad side of the barn that you want to hit it on, it's like right there. Coming in a little bit more from the right, you can see I'll, I'll adjust by turning in left on that broad side, so that way it's like, it hits me back more this way, rather than this way. See what I'm saying? So let's watch that approach one more time. Yeah, you can come from a little more from the right as well, so. I'm trying to get in the right and then I curve it left so that way it hits me to the right. Okay, little, very little micro movement. Like watch that at full speed. I mean, if I hadn't have done that little micro turn to the left, it probably wouldn't have worked. Sparks, let's see how easy that Sparksless gem collection is. It's not a big deal at all. And then uh, you can see there's a fodder kind of hiding right behind that metal guy right there. That's the metal guy that we left earlier. Um, if you were to not leave him, if you were to get them early, you could also opt. I've seen Saboom get these two boxes early as well. I think that's a little bit too much extraneous movement, but you could do it. You could also leave um, one of the red gems on the platform for the guy that's uh, down over uh, to the left, back over this way as you as you would curve around, right? Uh, you could leave one of those red gems and grab it later if it's giving you too much trouble. That section is awkward to clean up, the guy with the raising platform. Um, but overall, this little section right here, it's, it's cake, man. 
The actual bread and butter of this level is pretty cake. You see, I snuck in that flame charge right there. Look at that. Mm, right on his fucking ass. Snuck that flame charge in, and so we're green sparks. That sp green sparks, when you're at zero sparks, it comes back immediately, whereas other sparks is, um, he has to like chase the butterfly around and grab it, right? So that's it for Alpine Ridge. Um, I think Alpine Ridge is one of the more tricky levels, very nuanced in its optimization, but very uh, very clean and, and I would say simple in its approach. Ah, it's nuanced. It's a nuanced level. Um, if you fuck up, you have to really uh, adjust your movement on the fly for the cycles and be ready to wait. Don't, this is a level where you cannot be too hasty. If you are too hasty, if you're if you're like bonking a little bit and you're trying to still keep up with the cycles, that's a recipe for disaster because you are just going to miss them. Um, one more thing that I'm just, speaking of cycles that I'm thinking of off the top of my head, let's zoom through this level in reverse. In fact, I'll bring it all the way back here uh, like this. Going back towards the beginning, one last little backup I just want to mention, just kind of came into my head right now, is right before these stairs, Say that you have bonked and you fucked up your movement right here um, for these stairs and say the stairs are about to go down right now, basically. Like you're not as far forward in the cycle as I am. So the stairs basically go down like, oh, right here, probably, right? What you want to do is be above the second stair um, or wait and full hop on top of the second stair and hold the X button. You could even charge glide to, towards the top of the second stair when it's in its down position and hold the X button and Spyro will do the same thing that he does on the fountain on the top of the fountain in Stone Hill, where he does the rolling jump uh, infinitely. Um, only the second stair, the second, I think a little bit of the third stair as well, does the infinite rolling jump. So as long as you charge glide into those, not the first one, but as long as you charge glide into these two right here, these middle two, and hold the X button while pushing forward on your analog stick, then Spyro will be able to gank his way up there, even with the stairs down. So that's a cool little backup. Um, you don't want to wait. But yeah, that's pretty much Alpine Ridge right there. Um, Hopefully this video was insightful, sort of helpful to anyone who's uh, kind of messing around with 120 right now. And besides that, I hope it was entertaining. If you're just a casual viewer of uh, Spyro Media, you are a fucking legend. Big shout out to you. No matter who the fuck you are, I say keep chugging, keep fucking, and keep being sexy. You motherfucker, let's chug. Do it for the chugger downstairs, baby.